Good evening. On behalf of the Life Church located in Atlanta, Georgia, I'd like to welcome you and your family to our Wednesday night online worship experience. I'm grateful that you've decided to worship with us tonight, and I pray that your life will be made better as a result of that decision. As we get started on tonight, I'd just like to take a moment and speak to this current pandemic. This pandemic that is being caused by a strand of the coronavirus, COVID-19. This is a real virus and it is causing much destruction, much morbidity and mortality. It is not a hoax. It was not created by any scientist, by any political party. This virus does not care what color you are. It does not care what you live, where you live. It does not care which political party you are a part of. This virus is only looking for one thing, and that is another individual to infect. And I just want to take a moment to speak to you about the seriousness of this, this pandemic. This is real. Over 150,000 lives have already been lost. And this does not take in consideration the number of people who have been infected by this virus and who are yet dealing with complications caused by COVID-19. And the best thing that you could do is to do everything in your power to prevent yourself from being infected and also to be wise and to be um, empathetic and compassionate enough to ensure that you do not infect anyone else. Yes. This is, this is real. Unfortunately, we are living in a time where much deception has been released in the land. Jesus says that in the last days that deception would be released in a greater way, in a way that would be so great that he said, unless the days be short, the very elect would be deceived. Deception is not a new tool of the enemy. He used it from the very beginning. It is a reason that we are in this current state it is the reason why we needed a savior, because Adam and Eve, they were deceived in the garden, and consequently, they fell. And we now are born in a fallen state in need of a savior because Adam and Eve, they were deceived. The enemy is very cunning and wise in his ability for deception. Deception many times not only changes our mind, but it is also used as a tool for distraction. And that is what we are currently facing on today. There is much deception, much, much disinformation that is being released to change minds and also to distract. To distract us from things that we should be focusing on. To distract us from things that really, really matter. 150,000 lives taken in a short period of time. We should be thinking about that. A virus that has literally shut down our economy, that has caused lives to be put on hold. Yes, this is what we should be focusing on. But the disinformation that is being released is giving us something, a shiny, a shiny object to distract us and to take our attention off of the things that really matter. In 2016, there was a campaign of disinformation, a campaign of deception that was very successful. As a result of the disinformation that was released, many persons chose not to even vote in the 2016 election. Many minds were changed at the last minute as a result of the disinformation that was released. Yes, it was effective. And many believe that our current um, uh, leadership in our nation is a result of a disinformation campaign. Well, because they were so successful in 2016, they are using this campaign again in 2020, and they are taking it to a totally new level. It is being intensified. Millions and millions of dollars are being pumped into, not informing the public, but into disinforming the public into deceiving the public, yes, into lying to the public. And so you must take it upon yourself to do your own research. You gotta ask questions. You gotta see where information is coming from, making sure that the information that you are viewing, that you are reading is coming from a reliable source. 
making sure that what you are reading is actually true. And so I want to encourage you in this moment to not allow disinformation to deceive you or to change your mind or to keep you home even in this upcoming election. I won't tell you who to vote, but I would encourage you to make sure that whatever decision you make, that it is an informed decision based on real information and based on true facts. Some may say you're a pastor, so why would you speak to this on tonight? Well, I address these issues tonight because I am a pastor. And I care about the sheep that I pastor. I want the best for them. I want the best for them and for their families. And I am offended by information that is being released that could be used to deceive them and ultimately cause them harm. Even as we continue on tonight, I want to encourage you as we prepare, as we prepare to observe the Lord's communion on this Sunday, I want to speak to you concerning even in the midst of this pandemic and the midst of many of us yet being quarantined to understand that the gospel of Jesus Christ still must get out. That we as believers yet have a responsibility to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And I believe it is needed now more than ever before. This current situation has caused so much pain and so much discomfort there's so many people who are questioning their purpose and questioning their value. So many people not knowing what kind of life they will have when this season is over. So many questions, so many uncertainties, so many people uh, feeling isolated and all alone. And if there was ever a time that this gospel needed to be preached, needed to be shared, it is now. And I want to encourage every believer who's watching me on tonight, please don't keep this to yourself. Don't keep the gospel to yourself. Don't keep Jesus to yourself. Jesus is big enough to be shared. And I want to encourage you to share this gospel. There's somebody you know who's hurting, someone you know who's lonely and isolated, someone you know who don't have any peace and who's full of anxiety and fear and need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someone needs to know that just because we are in this situation does not mean that God is angry, that God is mad, that God is throwing us away, but to understand that yes, God still loves us and God still cares. That trouble does not mean that God is absent. I'll say that again, Some, someone needs to know that just because they are in trouble does not mean that God is absent. Just because you are in a painful season does not mean that God has left you. But many times it is a sign that God is with you. We would not have salvation on tonight. We would not have this precious gift of salvation. Our sins would not have ever been forgiven if God was not with those who suffer because his own son suffered and the father was with him while he was suffering. Not only was the father with him, but the father allowed his son to suffer. And that's so powerful and yet so meaningful because God who could have stopped the suffering. He permitted, he allowed his son to suffer, not because he loved watching his son suffer, not because he loved his son being in agony, but he allowed it. He permitted it because he saw the end. Hear me on tonight. The father allowed his son to suffer because he saw the results of the suffering. He saw what the suffering was going to produce. And because he saw the end result, because he saw the end, he permitted the pain. Hear me tonight, I'm speaking to someone right now who's in the midst of an uncomfortable condition situation, who are in a situation that they wish God would just take away, he would change, he would solve, he would fix. 
that, that they would be placed in a totally different condition. But I want you to know that maybe what you're in is working something good for your future. And that God is allowing it not because he enjoys your suffering, but he's allowing it because he sees what your suffering is going to produce. Paul said it this way, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In other words, Paul was saying that our present suffering is going to produce future glory. And so we've got to endure the present suffering so that we can obtain the future glory. Maybe this discomfort, maybe this pain is producing something great for your future. And I want to encourage you tonight, know that God is with you. That God has not left, he's not forsaken you. One of my favorite scriptures is that he is a present help in the time of trouble. That is comfort in itself, that God will be with us in our trouble. I say it this way, he's a partner in trouble, that he will not allow you to go through by yourself, but he loves you so much that even when he chooses not to take you out, he will really, he will truly, you can count on it, he'll go through it with you. And so tonight, even if it doesn't change by tomorrow morning, know that you are not in it alone, that God is with you. To the very end, he'll be with you. That is what we see in the message of Jesus Christ. We see him suffering, we see the agony, we see the humiliation, the rejection, we see all that he went through for you and for me and to know that he endured it. He didn't give up. He didn't go. He didn't throw away in the towel. He didn't quit, but he went through it. He endured it. He finished for you and for me. And I'm grateful that even though the father loved him and yet loves him, that the father allowed his son to suffer because he saw the results and he believe that the suffering was worth the results. Yes, the father saw the results. He saw you. He saw me. He saw that our lives depended on Jesus' sufferings, and he concluded that it was worth it. And the Bible says that it pleased him that the father found pleasure in the suffering of Jesus Christ, not because he enjoyed the pain that his son was enduring, but he saw what the suffering was going to produce. And consequently tonight, because the father allowed it and because the son endured it, here we are tonight. We're saved. And for you that have never given your life to Jesus Christ, the good news to you tonight is you can be saved. And the only reason you can be saved tonight is because the Father allowed it and the Son endured it. So don't let anybody convince you that you're not valuable. Don't let anybody convince you that you're not worth it, that you're not loved, that you're all by yourself. That's deception. That's misinformation. That's a lie. God loves you. God cares about you. And he values you. I know he values you because he gave his son for you. He allowed it and the son endured it just for you and for me. And tonight I am so grateful because my sins have been forgiven. I have peace with God. I call him now not just my God, but he's also my father. I have a relationship with him that will never end, not even in death. Death cannot destroy what God has given to me because what I have, what I have received from him will far outlast even death. After this body has deteriorated, after this body is no longer a suitable house for me, I will step out and I will step into the very presence of God. Why? Because God allowed it and because the son endured it. 
God bless you. Again, I'm so grateful that you decided to worship with us tonight. And I pray that you're going to be continually blessed as we continue in this service on tonight. I want you to do us a tremendous favor. Take your iPad, your mobile device, your computer, and like and share this to your timeline. I am convinced that someone you know will be blessed uh, by this worship experience. The funny thing is that misinformation, lies, deception, false advertisement, all of that uh, is shared over and over and over again. Many times it's shared millions of times before the truth gets out. But sometimes it's very difficult to convince people to share the truth. I want to encourage you tonight, share truth. We're not giving misinformation. We're giving the truth. So go ahead, like, and then share this to your timeline. God bless you. And now let's continue in this worship experience. We're praying the Holy Ghost tonight. And we come to give him praise and worship on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. There's beauty, Lord. There's beauty in my brokenness. Oh, I've got you love. I've got you love. Instead of pain. Your freedom, though you captured me.
Say that with me right there. Oh, sing you give me nothing that can be improved there's no area that he can be made greater or better because he's holy he can't become more powerful he cannot become stronger he cannot become mightier because he's holy he cannot be improved he is the essence of perfection and he's our God tonight this week is only possible because he's holy if he was anything other than holy this week would have no significance but come on look at your neighbor said he is holy come on tell him said my God is holy my father is holy He's not just good, he's holy. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. He's holy. And tonight we are holy only because he's holy. There is no degree of goodness that we could have achieved to become holy. We are holy because he is holy and he has made us he has declared us to be holy and i don't know about you but i'm grateful about it tonight that's why he can look at us and say be ye holy because i'm holy <laughs> if you're going to be my sons you're gonna to have to be holy because i'm holy hallelujah hallelujah be seated in his presence. We used to get excited over declaring we're holy. <laughs> they used to laugh at us and say, them the holy rollers. That's right. Look at your neighbor and say, we still holy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not embarrassed about it tonight. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. I wear it proudly. I'm holy. Hallelujah. Not because of anything I've done, but because of what he did. I'm holy tonight. I give him praise. I give him glory. I praise him tonight for being saved and sanctified. Have the, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> uh, not just the ghost, got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I have the Holy Ghost. I have the Spirit of God. I'm grateful tonight. I'm grateful to be redeemed. I'm grateful that my sins have been forgiven. Grateful that I have peace with God. Grateful that the blood's been applied to my life. But his suffering didn't begin at Holy Week. The Bible said from the beginning when he stepped out of heaven, the Bible said he emptied himself. 
he disrobed himself. He humbled himself and became a man. God became a man for us. And I know that may not mean much, but when you think about being able to go from the epitome and sitting on the throne and stepping off the throne to disrobe yourself to come and become a man and become humiliated and to step in flesh and to have to experience what it is to wear an earth suit understand what hunger and need is all about and pain and betrayal and hurt he experienced that not for himself but for us he was God when he got here he didn't come to be God he came because he was God we benefited greatly from his coming humbled himself and became a man stepped in an earth suit stepped in Mary's womb he stepped in a womb he created hallelujah hallelujah was nursed by breast he created hallelujah laid in a manger he created the trees that made the manger hallelujah for us not for himself but for us the shame and humiliation being lied on spat on made fun of hallelujah rejected by his own family uh, and that's why when you look at the life of Jesus you find yourself somewhere in there somewhere and so whatever you're going through, he can identify. That's why the scripture says, we have not a high priest that can, hallelujah, but he have one that can, have, can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. We don't have a high priest that's distant from our pain. So no matter what you've experienced, I broke, you say I grew up in a broken home. Well, he really, really broke up, grew up in a broken home. He was raised by a man that wasn't his father, and everybody knew it. He was a laughing stock of his family and the laughing stock of the community because they all knew his mama had gotten pregnant by somebody and they didn't even know who it was. But they know she told Joseph it was God. But they laughed at that. How could God be the baby of Mary's child? And the other, his other siblings, they didn't want nothing to do with him because they were embarrassed of him. And even when he started his ministry, his own, his own siblings wouldn't follow him. Oh, I'm talking to somebody on my way to the text tonight. I said his own siblings didn't believe in him. And you got a dream and your family won't get behind you. They won't push you. Everybody pushing you but your family. You would think that your family would be pushing you. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus understands. Jesus understands. Jesus, Jesus understands. Jesus understands. He understands to be lied on. He understands to be betrayed. He, under, he understands. He understands helping folk, and then when you need help, they ain't nowhere to be found. He, under, he understands. He understands when you go out of your way to help folk, and they won't even come back and say thank you. Look at you, and they say, he understands. <laughs> You're not the only one. He under. He under, he under, he under, he understands what it's like for them to praise you today and try to kill you tomorrow. He look at you and say, he understands. <laughs> Glory. Let me go to this text so I get, I get excited and they try to sit me down. But look at your neighbor and say, he understands. I don't care what you're experiencing tonight. He he under, he understand. He know what it is to get tired. He know what it is to get exhausted. And folk don't, folk don't care nothing about you and don't even care that you're tired. They just want what they want. Oh, I know somebody, somebody in here know got some folk like that. They don't even care how you're doing. They just want what they, what they want. Ah, uh, Jesus under, Jesus under. Jesus understands when you're trying to help them and they fight you while you're trying to help them. He under, he, he, he under, he under, he understands. He, he understands. I'm grateful tonight. I'm grateful for him. I'm grateful for his love for us. A love that we can never fully understand. I'm grateful. I love him tonight only because he first, he first loved, he loved us. His flesh was, was flesh like ours. And some would say, well, he probably didn't feel that pain 
but I want you to know he had flesh that could be, that he felt the pain. He felt every time they hit him. He felt every thorn that was pressed in his skull. He felt it. He felt the nail. He felt it. He felt it. He felt it. He, he, you get, it has no power if you don't understand. He felt it. You'll take it lightly if you think if you just look at a picture and just think it well it just happened and he was God he didn't he felt he felt it and he endured it he could have come down but he stayed up <laughs> oh look at your neighbor thanks thank God he ain't a quitter thank <laughs> look at your neighbor say I, I probably would have tried to come down but look at your neighbor say thank God he's not a quitter <laughs> Thank God he's the author and the finisher. Thank God he finishes everything he started. Thank God he didn't come down until he said, it is. Look at your lips. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. He, he started it and he, and he finished it. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he did. I, I, I needed him to die on that cross. I, I didn't need him just to hurt. I needed him to, I needed him to die. I needed him to die. I needed him. I needed him. To, I wouldn't be saved if he just got hurt. I needed him. I needed him to die. My life was dependent on his death. I couldn't live unless he died. No wonder the Baptist preacher reminds us all the time. He died. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, he died, he died, he died, he died, he died. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> he didn't go into a deep sleep. It wasn't a coma, uh, but he died. His pulse stopped. He died. Heart stopped beating. He died. Blood stopped running in his vein. He died. He coded on the cross. <laughs> And there was no nurse and doctor to revive him. He, look at the neighbor, say he died. He died. By the time they got him down, he was already dead. Oh, my. Oh, my. I just want to remind you. I want, look at the neighbor, say he's just trying to remind us. If you're not careful, we'll take this thing lightly. If we're not careful, we'll just breeze over it. If we're not careful, we'll just look at bunnies and look at eggs. If we're, if we're, if we're not careful, all we'll think about the stress of trying to get a new outfit. But look at your neighbor and say, he died, he died. This ain't about a new outfit. This ain't about pretty colors. This ain't about springtime. He died, he, he died, he died, he died. He died. He couldn't get up unless he died. I said he couldn't get resurrected unless he died. There's no need for a resurrection unless you die. He... I'm glad he died tonight. I'm, I'm glad he, I'm glad he died. I'm glad the father, I'm glad the father let him die. Oh God, I'm trying to get to Romans. Uh, look. Uh, I said, I'm glad the father let him die. Because the father had to watch. The closest thing we got to a, to a God's love is a mama's love. And I can't imagine a mother watching their child die when they can do something about it and not stopping it but look at your neighbor said the father let jesus die i'm so glad i'm so glad he did the father let him die i told you love tied his hands It got so it got so hard he flipped the lights y'all ain't come to have church y'all y'all just y'all just y'all just came to look at one another look at your neighbor and said he went and flipped the switch turned the lights off and the sun refused to shine y'all sit down 
Y'all sit down. I ain't gonna be able to preach Sunday. Y'all sit down. It would have been easy if Jesus had been quiet. But he messed around and said, Father, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? <laughs> the light may be out, but you still know my voice. My God, my God. Why hast thou? Y'all sit down. 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 Y'all sit, sit, sit down. But you need to understand it. You need to understand it. That's why you ought to read it and read it. Because every time you read it, you'll see something you didn't see before. Keep on reading it. Every time the enemy tells you you're insignificant, every time the enemy thinks you tell you you're nobody, when life comes in and turns, it turns on you and things start happening and all hell break out, pick up your Bible and start reading this. It's a love story to remind you that you're not by yourself, that, that God loves you and God not, didn't just write a love song to tell you he loved you, but he did something. He said, I'm going to show you how much I love you. Look at your neighbor and said, he showed us showed us how much he loved us this is not a fairy tale he showed us how much he loved us he said well that's what you Christians believe no this is history the only thing historians don't don't agree with is that he got up but everything up until resurrection history records it there's no such thing. If there was a Jesus, there was a Jesus. I know it was a Jesus. All you got to do is look at the date. There was a Jesus. Because if it wasn't a Jesus, where did before Christ come from? How did we put the mark there? He was so powerful, he stopped time and made time start all over again. So you worship Muhammad if you want to, but Muhammad ain't stopped time yet. Ain't no such thing as before, after Buddha or Confucius. As wonderful as Abraham was, there's not a before or after Abraham. Turn cities upside down. Turn empires upside down. The Roman Empire that tried to stop the church ended up becoming the church. You can only be an atheist or an agnostic if you are ignorant. It is hard to be informed and not believe, even if you can't define it. You've got to believe that there's something to this. And after 2,000 years, they haven't found a body yet. With the FBI, CIA, and everybody else, and they ain't found a body. They haven't even found a part of the body. The tomb is empty. They said, well, somebody stole his body. Well, where did they take it? And you know folk can't keep no secret. Somebody would have leaked something by now. Because you know your best friend can't hold a secret for a couple of hours. So if they had moved the body, somebody would have told it by now. There is no body. There is only an empty tomb. He died. And the Bible said this gospel went forth and people were saved and cities were turned upside down without a New Testament. 
They preach one message. He died, they buried him, and he got up. And the churches grew and multiplied over he died, they buried him, and he got up. And they preached it from city to city and city and city. And as many as believed it, they got baptized full of the Holy Ghost. All because they believe he died. They buried him. And he got, he got up. That was one message. We would have left that church because that preacher ain't got but one sermon. I've been going to that church for two months, and every time I go, he preached the same sermon. Seemed like he would pray and God would give him a new word. But they kept coming back to church to hear the same message. He died. What are you going to preach today? What, what Rev going to preach today? He died. They buried him, and he got up. You know what the message was before you went to church, and you still went. He died. They buried him. And he got up. And they brought folk to hear the same message. Praise the Lord. I got 15 minutes. I'll give you two verses and we're gone. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, I'm excited about this. Yes, I believe this. I believe this. I know you're being blessed by tonight's experience. Just wanted to take a moment and encourage you to sow a seed into the good ground of the Life Church. Yes, Life Church is good ground. It's good ground because this ground produces. I can give you numerous testimonies of individuals who have connected their lives, their family lives, to the Life Church. And tonight, their lives are drastically different. Their lives have been transformed for the better. At the Life Church, we are all learning to live our very best life. Yes, we introduce persons to Jesus Christ, and then after introducing them to Jesus, we show them how to live a better life. And so tonight, as you sow your seed, know that you are helping us in that effort. Not only are we changing lives lives of those who are connected to our uh, ministry, but we are also changing the lives and helping individuals in our community. We partner time and time again with uh, agencies and organizations in our community as we are helping to enhance the living conditions of those who live in uh, the Southwest community. We're getting ready to do a back to school effort with the Continental Colony Elementary School. We partnered with this school several times in the past and we're getting ready to partner with them again as they prepare uh, their students for this coming year. They're doing a massive uh, giveaway and we have already agreed and committed to partnering with them to make sure that the financial burden of this commitment is lifted. And so we are assisting them. And so as you sow tonight, know that your gifts are going to help uh, those elementary schools or uh, students who are getting ready to start a new school year under these present conditions. Not only are we uh, assisting with the effort by Continental Colony Elementary School, but we're getting ready to do our own uh, uh, back to school giveaway that will take place at our facility as we provide supplies to students as they prepare for this new year. This is going to be a very uh, different year for many of our students. And so the needs will be great uh, and the needs will be different. Uh, and we want to make sure that our students are adequately prepared for this year. So as you give tonight, know that your seed not only help us get this gospel out, but it is also impacting lives in our community. There are several ways that you can give tonight. You can go to our website. That website address is www.lifechurchofatlanta.org. You can also uh, give via Cash App. That Cash App address is Life Church Atlanta. Again, Life Church Atlanta. 
And you can also text and give by texting Life Text to Give. Again, Life Text, the number to give to the number 71441. Whichever option you choose, that's fine, but I want to encourage you to put a seed into the good ground of the Life Church and expect God to give you a great harvest. God bless you, and now let's return uh, to the rest of tonight's experience. Romans 8 and verse 31. After we have discovered how God foreknows and predestines and then he calls and after he calls he justifies and after he justifies he glorifies he foreknows and based on what he foreknows he predestined he makes decision and then he elects he chooses and then we respond to his choosing and when we respond to his choosing, he justifies us, meaning that he declares us innocent. He acquits us, you know, acquit, you know, because, you know, people can be acquitted even though they're guilty. You, you know, you know, everybody acquitted is not really innocent. A lot of folk acquitted are guilty, but because good attorneys can get them acquitted. Mm -hmm. We had a good attorney that got us acquitted, but not only did we get acquitted, then he turned around and gave us his righteousness. That, 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 that's important because it, it's not enough that he would equip, uh, acquit us, but also that he would then turn and said, I don't want you to earn your righteousness I'm, because I know you're not going to be able to do it. I'm going to give you my righteousness. And then he turns around and then he uh, glorifies us. And then after doing that, then Paul goes here to verse 31. And we've heard this before, but hearing it now in context, it makes it make sense. What shall we then say to these things? Mm -hmm. See, verse two. You got to get to the place where the word, the word is your hammer. That the word of God can move you like a good ham and organ can. Uh, and what shall we say to these things? Now your mind should be triggered because for weeks we've been talking about things. And we know that all. We just finished talking about all things. We just finished talking about things being used for uh, 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 to be worked together for our good and his purpose. And then, then Paul then, as, as he is coming to a dramatic uh, uh, conclusion, he says, and, and, and we know, uh, 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 what shall we then say to these things? What, what, what shall we say? Then, 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 then he goes on and he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, because God is for us, who can be against us? When I see who God is, then it makes my opposition look insignificant. I see, that, that's what Paul is saying. Paul is not saying because God is for us, there will be nothing that will come against you. What Paul is saying, that when you know who is for you, then it makes no difference what is against you. And, and, and Paul didn't want us to become focused on what and who's against us, but to become focused on who is for you. And then look at your neighbor and say, because he is for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. It doesn't matter who's plotting against you. It doesn't matter who don't like you. It don't matter who's talking about you. It doesn't matter who's conniving against you. It doesn't matter who's working against you. It doesn't matter who's doing hoodoo and voodoo. Because if God be for us, look at your neighbor and tell him that God is for you. 
See, see, that, that's the revelation. That's what you need to understand. See, because many believers are not convinced God is for them. But you came tonight and God wanted me to show you and to tell you and convince you that he is for you. Look at your neighbor and prophesy. Tell them God is for you. God is for you. God is for you. Come on, come on, sit down. I, I got a few more minutes and we got to get out of here. God is for you. God is, God is for you. God, God is, God is for you. But the loan officer ain't working with me, pastor, but God. God is for, you don't know what I, what I'm going through in my office, pastor, and it doesn't even matter what you're going through, because God is for, my, my, my supervisor trying to get rid of me, she, she working, she don't think I know what you're doing, but I, the Lord showed me what you're doing, but I come to tell you, it does not matter, because God, God is for you. Paul says, because God is for me, it does not matter who can be against us you see we have we have given too much power and influence to the devil we 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 made him to be bigger than what he is he 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 he's not all that we made him out to be the bible said he is as a roaring lion he the Bible doesn't even say he is a roaring lion the Bible said he's just as a roaring lion. <laughs> You see, you see, 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 your daddy created the devil. The devil did not create your daddy. The devil is a created being who was an angel who fell from his position in glory. Now, now here, understand this because this should help you tonight. And when he fell, the Bible said he convinced a third, one Third, we're going back to math school. We're going back to math. We're going to look at this thing. Uh, we, got, we got a made devil who only takes one third of the angels. You, you don't need a PhD. If I take one third, how much I got left? So that means there are two thirds of the angels that are still in heaven who are for you. So all of hell is, is, is only one a half of what's in heaven that's for you. I'm not even talking about daddy. I'm just talking about the angels. I haven't even gotten to daddy yet. That means daddy don't even have to get off his throne. That means we already. Take it, take it, take it. We've already won before daddy gets off his throne because our opposition is one third and two thirds are still for us. So even if all of hell comes against you, you still win. No wonder he said greater is he that's in you than he that is in, in the world. Paul said, put this thing in perspective that your enemy is not who you made him out to be. That, that, that what is against you is really not as powerful as you made it out to be. But the thing that you should be focusing in on is who is for you. And the reason you're depressed because you're looking at who is against you. But if you would start looking at who is for you, your head would not be hung down, but your head would be lifted. You would not be depressed, but you would be full of joy. Look at your neighbor again and say, God is. God is for you. God is for you. God is, some of you need to make a big sign and put it on your refrigerator. God is for me. Some of you need to put a sign on your rearview mirror. God is for me. Some of you need to change the face on your, on your cell phone. God is for me. Some of you need to change your screen, your, your, your home screen on your computer. God is for you. Every time you look to be reminded, God is. God. God is for you. That's why we know that all things work together for our good. Look at your neighbor and say, how you know it? Because God is for me. 
There is now therefore no condemnation uh, to them that in Christ Jesus. Uh, how do you know that? Cause God is for me uh, yes lord uh, yes lord said together god is for me <laughs> one more verse and we're done <laughs> come on say it again god is for me god is for me i am for God and God is for me I am for God and God is for me I am for God and God is for me it's not for everybody this promise is not for everybody this promise is for those uh, who are for God uh, and he said if you're for me uh, I'll be for you uh, if you uh, if you acknowledge me uh, I'll acknowledge you uh, if you stand up for me uh, I'll stand up for you uh, I am for God uh, and God uh, is for me verse 32 verse 32 and we're done this resurrection week this holy week <laughs> this week that we remember Paul says here that he that spared not his own son but deliver him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things if he didn't hold back his son he won't hold back that I said if he didn't hold back his son he won't hold back that what you've been praying for and trying to convince yourself that God's going to do it I'm here to declare if he didn't hold back his son he won't hold back that either yes Lord if it's necessary for your destiny he won't hold it back if it's necessary for your purpose he won't hold it back if it's necessary for your contentment he won't hold it back if it's necessary for your peace he won't hold it back if he freely gave us his son he will freely give us all all that's what the bible said all all things all things all things put that verse on your prayer list when the devil said he ain't gonna do it how can you tell me he's not gonna do this when he freely gave me his son and if he can freely give me his son uh, surely he'll freely give me this uh, if he freely gave me his son uh, surely surely that's mine too I said that's mine too look at your neighbor say it's already mine it's already mine he won't hold it back he will give it to me it's mine I can have it I can have it come on stand up we're on our way home come on Come on, declare that I can have it. Come on, declare that I can have it. I can have it. God said, I can have it. I can have that too. I can have that too. That too. I can have that too. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. 
if he would freely give us his son, surely, surely, surely. Isaiah said it pleased the Lord to bruise him. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have to sit and get a, a lesson on that text. Hear the Father describe how he got pleasure out of the suffering of his son. It was not that he enjoyed his son's suffering. It was that he saw what the suffering was going to produce. And that's why most of us can't endure suffering because we only see as far as suffering. But if we ever get our eyes open to see what's on the other side. See, God saw past the suffering and he saw you and me on the other side. He saw a son suffering, but he saw many sons waiting on the other side that that suffering was necessary for. And so it pleased the Lord. Scripture says that Christ endured the cross despising the shame for the joy that was set before him. There was no joy in it, but there was some joy in front of it. And he was pressing through the suffering trying to give, get to the joy on the other side. I'm talking to somebody tonight who's in the midst of trouble. And I want you not to give up but press through. There's some joy waiting on the other side. If you could see what that suffering is producing for you, you'll endure it better. There's something on the other side. Bow your heads all over this house. Bow your heads all over the house. Bow your heads all over the house. Hmm. What shall we say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? The Lord is the my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my refuge and strength of every present help in the time of trouble. The Lord is on my side. I shall not fear what man can do unto me. Because what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who, what would dare try to be against us? Yes, God so loved us that he gave his son, allowed his son to come and allowed his son to suffer and to die for you and for me. And the son agreed and willingly came and endured the suffering, the shame, and the death just for us. And tonight salvation is available for whosoever, whosoever will, whosoever will believe on what has been done, what Jesus has done for all of us. The Bible lets us know that if we believe in what he did, if we were willing to confess it even with our mouth, the Bible says we will be saved. In other words, we can receive the benefits of what Jesus has done just because we believe he did it and we accept the gift that he has purchased for us, the gift of salvation. In that gift is life everlasting, not just life after death, but life in the earth, because there are many people who are breathing, walking around, but yet not living. But Jesus came that we would have life and life to the full, to the overflow, life forever, life that cannot end. And tonight, if you're watching and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, 
you're watching tonight and you're not saved, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, to come into the family of God. I want to give you that opportunity. It's available for you. This gift is available and this gift is waiting just for you to receive it. And tonight, if you will receive it, it will freely be given to you. It's so simple. It's simple according to the word of God. If we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, we are guaranteed that we will be saved. And so I'm going to lead you in a prayer and I'm going to ask that you pray with me as you pray. I want you to say exactly what I say and mean every word that you say. And I guarantee you tonight, Christ is going to save you, forgive you of all of your sins, and yes, bring you into the very family of God. Come on, pray along with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you came to earth, you lived and you died. You died on the cross, you shed your blood, they buried you for three days, you remained in the grave, but on the third day, God raised you from the dead, and today you are alive forevermore. Jesus, I believe this, and I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of all of my sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Right now, I am. I'm saved. Come on, declare it with me again. Right now, I am. I'm saved. And yes, my brother, my sister, if you prayed that prayer and you meant what you prayed, right now, you're saved. I want to encourage you to take the next step and get yourself committed, connected to a local church, a local ministry. And tonight, I want to encourage you to become a part. Connect your life to the Life Church. I'd love to be your pastor. I'd love to have the responsibility of feeding you and watching you grow. Grow into the person that God has saved you to be. And tonight, by simply texting Life Church to the number 31996. Again, just text Life Church to the number 31996. And then follow the prompts and place the information that's requested. And someone will be in touch with you, welcoming you to life. You may be watching tonight and you are already saved, but you're not connected to a, a ministry. You're not connected to a church, a body of believers. I want to encourage you. Every believer needs to be connected to other believers. Every believer, you need other believers. Someone needs you and you need them. And consequently, you need to be connected to a church. And I want to encourage you to connect your life to Life Church tonight. Again, by texting Life Church to the number 31996 and follow those prompts and place the information that's requested. And you too will become a part of Life Church on, on tonight. I want to encourage you to stay connected to life as we continue in this week. There are classes that are available, and I want to encourage you to take advantage of every class that you can. Uh, there are classes for the adults as well as for our youth. Sunday morning at 9 is our Sunday school hour, and there's several classes that you can connect to. Uh, any class uh, you choose, it will be a blessing to your life. Again, that those classes begin at 9 a.m., and then we'll gather at 10 a.m., for our Sunday morning online worship experience. Again, thank you for worshiping with us tonight. And again, I'll see you right back here at Life. God bless you.